So I wanted to get straight into this today, and I wanted to hear your opinion. News Nations Ashley Banfield and People Magazine have come out with this new information from a reliable source, they say, that Brian Koberger had photos of one of the victims on his phone. Photos, plural photos, not just one, but it's not clear whether it was photos that he had taken himself or maybe downloaded from one of their social media pages. Let me know down below what is your opinion on this. Got some breaking news to report to you regarding the Idaho murder case. The uh, four murdered uh, students in Idaho, Brian Koberger in jail, awaiting the next hearing in June, a gag order making it very difficult to sort of put the pieces together in this very strange mystery. But we are learning something tonight about Brian Koberger and his predilections. On his phone, according to People Magazine and News Nation's reporting as well, on Brian Koberger's phone, numerous pictures of one of the victims. I had a chance to talk with Steve Helling, who's investigative reporter with People Magazine, about some of the findings regarding that piece of information, the fact that Koberger's phone had loads of pictures of one of the victims. This is our conversation earlier. So, you know, somebody who's very familiar with the investigation says that after they arrested Brian Koberger, they took his phone, which, of course, is what you would expect. And now that they've been looking at his phone, you know, they have all of his communications. They have all of the things that you would have on your phone. And one of the things that they looked at were the pictures. And there are pictures of at least one of the victims in his photo roll. Uh, we don't know the details of those pictures. We don't know whether they are pictures he took from a distance. We don't know if they're pictures he downloaded from her social media, but he had pictures of one of the female victims on his phone. And is anyone uh, pointing to which one of the three female victims might be the one who's um, on his phone? I mean, we all have our suspicions, and of course the cops certainly know, but that's not something that they're telling. You know, there's a gag order in place. They can't tell us all these details. But yes, uh, it was one of the uh, one of the three female victims, and cops are, sure know who they are. You and I could guess all day, and we'd probably guess correctly, but we don't have that officially. And of course, it, without even being able to name them, it's hard to, to push further to suggest, is that person potentially the target? of all of this? Like, was there one person who was the target and maybe the other three ended up as, as collateral? Are they saying anything about that? Well, before the second gag order came along, you know, we were getting, you know, you were getting it, I was getting it, we were getting these tips. And, you know, I think that they had a pretty good idea, even back then, a month ago, of who the primary target was. Whether or not these pictures are of that person who you and I both pretty much no, is, is, remains to be seen. So what else did they get? Or are you able to find out about um, from, you know, combing his photo rolls? Is there any other clue in there? No, but it certainly seems as though he was, um, you know, he was very aware of what was going on in this house. We know that, you know, obviously, besides the photos, we already know that his phone just kept pinging from that area. You know, he'd been there several times. So I think the phone is going to be a real treasure trove of information for the investigators, not just from the pictures, not just from, you know, we don't know the text he sent. We do know, as we talked about a, a few weeks ago, that he had reached out to one of the girls on Instagram. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of tracks there that they can look at and, you know, tracks that I don't think that he covered. There's one line in your exclusive um, where your source says, uh, it looked as though Koberg, Koberger was certainly, quote, paying attention to her. Were you able to read into that any further? I think paying attention means something more than just, you know, noticing somebody. Paying attention means that you are, um, you know, purposefully and and very deliberately, uh, you know, keeping track of somebody, keeping track of who they are, what they're doing, that type of thing. So there was somebody who was on his radar for a while. Um, and that person, that that girl was unfortunately one of the victims. You know, all this time we've been trying to figure out the nexus between, 
you know, this uh, alleged killer and these victims. And the only connection that so far can really be made is the fact that um, he's a vegan. Mm -hmm. And Zana and Maddie both worked at the Mad Greek, which is one of the best vegan, you know, restaurants in that area of both Pullman and Moscow. So from what I've heard from my sources in Pullman, if you're a vegan in Pullman, you have been to the Mad Greek many times. Mm -hmm. It is one of your go to places. Do we know if there's any connection to the two victims who worked at the Mad Greek, Zana and Maddie, and this photograph? Sure. Well, what I would say is that, you know, we've reported about a month ago that he had been to the Mad Greek. And then the Mad Greek came out with a statement that basically said, you know, somebody is trying to cash in on 15 minutes of fame. I think referring to the former employee who had given that information up, you know, um, but they never, ever denied for sure that he was there. They just said somebody is, you know, somebody is trying to cash in on some fame here. So, you know, I think that we can we can pretty much surmise that, you know, the restaurant, the phone, all of this type of stuff is something that police have looked into very, very carefully to make sure that they understand kind of the timeline of how did these girls, or at least how did one of these girls get onto Brian Koberger's radar? And he did somehow, or she did somehow, somehow he found her and targeted her allegedly. And so that was really, you know, what the cops are looking at right now. And then just one more uh, clarity on your exclusive, and it's pictures plural, right? It's not just one picture. He had pictures plural of at least one victim. Right. Then that could be two. That could be 450. We don't know. We just know it's more than one. You know, you can have a picture of somebody on your phone and not be fixated on that person. But more than one certainly means that, you know, whether or not he took more than one, you know, I, I'm the worst. When I take pictures of my food, I take four pictures of it. Okay. So, you know, it could have been something like that. Or it could be that he downloaded things from her Instagram or screenshotted things from her Instagram. So yeah, that's the other thing, right? Because we don't know if it's downloaded or if they were actually right. snapped on his phone. There's no way to tell between that. Well, at least they're not telling us. They would know. They're not telling us, but but they certainly know. You know, because every picture you take, it tells, you know, you can figure out exactly where a picture was taken, when it was taken, all of that. And people who know a lot more about computers than I do can figure that out. So you better believe that the cops are doing that.